There we go. <laughs> clear, concise stimulus that has a clear beginning and end. It's discrete. Um, <laughs> that's why we do those. Um, see, the whole behavioral momentum thing's already kicking in. You guys are wondering what the hell I'm talking about. But I have a long history of making jokes about behavior analysis. <laughs> a very long history. Almost as old as I am, because even before I was trained, I was a behavior analyst as a kid. You know, I got it. My mom took me out. We observed people. So there's an example of behavioral momentum, right? Even to this day, I can't go to the mall without just sitting in the chair and watching people. It's just like I can't not make jokes about behavior analysis. I can't just, I can't just be normal. I can't. It does. It just comes out. You don't even know when it's going to happen, but it just something comes out. It just the weirdness just starts to pop out. There's a lot of behavioral momentum. What does that really mean? It means I have an extraordinarily long history or an extraordinarily rich history of reinforcement for that particular behavior. It could actually be on a very thin schedule, but by rich I mean a lifetime of it, right? So a long time. So that momentum just continues. Under certain schedules, the behavioral momentum develops fairly quickly. It's really hard to stop. Think of stopping a train versus stopping a, a, a go-kart, okay? And it's affected by schedules of reinforcement. So just keep that in mind, that when you're trying to change a behavior, there may be a lot of damn behavioral momentum with it, and you might have to be pushing a lot for a very long time to get that behavior to change. But it will change. Just be patient.